Do you really know how much will be in your retirement account next year or 10 years from now? Are you sure there aren't steps you can take to be more tax efficient with your retirement money? I'm Tracy Capelman. Join me right now for your wealth health. Hello and welcome to Your Wealth Health, a show focused on helping you manage your money. I'm your host, Tracy Capelman, and I am here once again with Cliff Hawkins. Cliff is a private wealth advisor who has more than 15 years of experience. He joined Hilltop Wealth Solutions in 2020 and integrated his own practice with the firm. It is so great to see you again, Cliff. Hey, Tracy, it's good to be here, thanks. Well, this week we are going to discuss how to cut taxes in retirement. But before we get started, since you're new to the show, I'm always curious, why do you do what you do? You know, that's a great question. And it, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really a burning desire that I have to help people. It's, it, it's, a, it's a passion I've had for a long time, uh, from a little child growing into an adult. Um, I've always wanted to help people. So, you know, becoming a financial advisor and private wealth advisor, it allows me to help so many different people, whether they're just starting off and they need help planning for college or whether they're now actively saving and they're in their, their highest earning years and they're trying to do it efficiently and whether they're retired and now they want to spend and make sure they don't run out of money, uh, but enjoy their lifestyle. So being able to help folks like that, um, I, I just get a kick out of it. I love it. That's awesome because you know what? I think a lot of people are a little overwhelmed by financial matters. And it's just interesting to find out what inspires people to follow the path they choose. So helps people understand your motivation. I love it. Well, Cliff, everybody is concerned about the potential tax increases that could be coming as a result of President Biden's tax proposal. It's an excellent time for retirees or those nearing retirement to become aware of how they can save money on their taxes in retirement. Often with just a little extra planning, it can make a really big difference. Yeah, and you know, Tracy, the thing is, is most people, um, they're busy, they're working, uh, they're, they're paying taxes through their earned income and life is hectic, life is busy and they're just not thinking about what's the tax bill going to look like in retirement what's uncle sam going to going to want uh from my from my assets at that point in time so it's it's not a difficult thing to do it's just something that most people don't think about uh, but with a little proper planning early on um it, it can easily be done you need to determine what your your expenses are going to be in retirement uh what your lifestyle what you want that to look like what kind of income you need to live on. And from there, we can start to determine what buckets of, of income we need to use to make your retirement turn into a reality. And you know what, you're right, because I think it's one of those things that we're all so busy that we can think, well, I'll sit down next month or next month. And then that just doesn't happen, right? That's a really important point. Well, you know, you talked about a lot of different factors, including what type of lifestyle you plan on having in retirement. Um, and, and that's really important because your strategy can help people really determine, you know, what they need to do. Absolutely. And um, I have a chart I would like to show. And what this chart shows is the, the different streams of income. And the reason I want to show this chart is because when we're developing a financial plan and we're helping someone get set up for retirement where they're no longer working, there's no longer an income coming in and they're going to live off of their uh, investable assets. What's that look like? What other assets are available? How are they all taxed? So we have to take all this into consideration. So when you look at the chart, it, it has a number of different things there. Your social security, it's not taxed like your capital gains, which isn't taxed like your dividend income. Obviously, you know, earned income, most of us understand that is what we're taxed on today. Tax-free interest income, interest income, profit income. These are all taxed differently, yet these are all buckets that we have in some capacity in our portfolios. So we have to be able to manage those and set up the best tax strategy so that, again, we're giving more back to you and less to Uncle Sam. 
Absolutely. I know people need to hear this. And, you know, one example I can think of off the top of my head is I've known retirees that have close to 50% of their Social Security taxed. Is there any way to avoid getting hit so hard? Yeah, absolutely. Well, and here's the thing, Tracy, you can actually be taxed up to 85% on your Social Security. Um, so almost every dime can be taxed. Uh, and there are definitely wow. ways to, to help with that. Uh, and it, again, it, it goes back to planning. It goes back to hiring a professional. Um, and we can implement strategies early on to help and or we can implement strategies while you're in retirement because there are thresholds that we can help you manage so that most of your income isn't taxable. Are there any other ways to cut taxes in retirement that involve, like, let's say, medical expenses? Yeah, so you can move money um, from a, an, a traditional IRA into an HSA, which is a health savings account. Now, most people don't know this because it's, it's not well known. Um, it comes with some pretty strict rules, but you can do a one-time uh, qualified distribution from your IRA to your HSA and then allow that money to grow in, in that account and then use it uh, for qualified medical expenses. Now, Cliff, that makes me wonder, can you contribute to a Roth IRA in retirement? Yeah, so Tracy, that's a great question. Um, if you're working part-time in retirement and you have earned income, you can contribute to a Roth IRA. And I think that's a great strategy for someone that is working part-time in retirement because if we, you know, a Roth IRA, it's going to grow uh, tax-free and the distribution is going to be tax-free. So that's going to just, you know, either grow a current income stream or add a secondary income stream uh, to someone's retirement if they are working in, re in, in retirement. So a Roth is a great option. And Cliff, I know you have a little more you want to share with us about cutting taxes in retirement, but first, sounds like you have a special offer today for some of our viewers that might need some guidance or a second opinion in regard to some financial decisions. I do, I do. So what we're doing is we're doing a complimentary second opinion. Um, and that's for anyone that calls in, uh, we're doing a, a 30 minute uh, complimentary a call with them uh, to understand a little more about their situation. Uh, if there's any specifics uh, to give them you know, an, a more of an overview of what we do and how we work with our clients. Um, and there's no obligation, uh, just a simple phone call so we can see if, if there's a way that we can potentially help people out there. That's awesome. Anything else you have for us on the topic of reducing taxes in retirement? Yeah, a few other things. So one would be in the way of a traditional IRA doing a conversion into a Roth IRA. Um, that's a strategy that we've been using a, a lot. It's been pretty hot because people understand taxes are, are probably going to go up at some point in time. So I'd rather pay taxes today and then have a tax-free distribution later uh, down the road. So that's one way. Uh, another is uh, I have a chart that I'd like to show. And the chart here talks about ordinary long-term capital and qualified dividend rates. So you can't really talk about um, capital gains without talking about the Biden tax proposal that's being floated around, uh, you know, so how are there ways we can reduce uh, and or avoid long-term capital gains? So if you look at the chart, you can see that most people don't understand capital gains are actually taxed significantly differently than our ordinary income. So if you earn up to $80,000 a year and you have the capital gains, uh, you may have zero taxes to pay on capital gains. That's a long-term capital gain, which means you've held the asset for over 12 months. And as the chart goes down, you see the brackets are still pretty large. You can earn up to $418,000 and still be in a 15% tax bracket on capital gains and up to $600 thousand dollars and be in a 20 percent tax bracket so that's pretty significant so some things you can do if you are going to be hit with capital gains or if you're worried about capital gains rate going up significantly higher because of the biden proposal uh one is you can wait a little longer before you sell so just kind of let the assets sit in there unappreciated before you actually make a sell uh, another is to time your capital losses with your capital gains and what i mean by that if you have a capital loss of $1,000 and you have a capital gain of $1,200, uh, that's, a, that's a net gain of only $200. Uh, so that's another, uh, another way. 
And lastly, another way that you can either you know, avoid or reduce capital gains is sell when your income is low. So as the chart shows you here, the capital gains tax rates are based on your income. So if, you're new, if you know you're about to retire, your spouse is about to retire, you're having a lean year, that might be a good time to sell because you will probably have little to no capital gains tax. Cliff, thank you so much. You gave us so much to think about today. My pleasure. It's always great to be on. It's always great to educate people. Education is the key. We got great information on lightening the tax burden in retirement, man. Well, we are out of time for this edition of Your Wealth Health. For Cliff Hawkins and the entire Hilltop staff, I'm Tracy Capelman. Thanks for watching and stay wealthy, everyone. We hope you found this discussion helpful today. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for new content weekly.